Hello, my name is James Chang, and I'll be introducing Bitcoin Tracenet, a formalism which allows us to perform contract verification at signing or runtime. I'm a PhD at the Technical University of Denmark, and I'm supervised by Alberto Luz Lafuente. I have a co-supervisor, Massimo Bartoletti, from the University of Cagliari. So let's start with the promise of smart contracts. Consider the following example, a coin swap between Alice and Bob. How can we perform this contract without Alice trusting Bob and vice versa, and any other trusted intermediary? This is where blockchain promises to provide a solution, because new transactions can be posted by anybody, it is permissionless, and posted transactions or appended to the blockchain are immutable, they cannot be reverted. Let us now consider how we can implement a coin swap contract as a blockchain program. Since all transactions in the blockchain are one single global order, one of the actors must always commit funds first, in this case Alice, as shown below. However, this can potentially open the uh, initiating actor to adversarial actions from the counterparty, who may not cooperate or not show up. We can solve this by designing the contract as a commit protocol, as shown below. After Alice commits her A coin, Bob can decide to participate and deposit his B coin, leading to a state where both actors can withdraw the funds deposited by the counterparty, thereby completing the swap. If Bob decides to not cooperate, a timeout will eventually expire, allowing Alice to withdraw her initial A-coin deposit. This is the board path. Notice that both success and a board path are safe. Either the swap completes in total or not at all. In Bitcoin, coins are represented as outputs. These outputs are spendable by transactions, which in turn produce new outputs. Notice that in our implementation here, we have two separate subgraphs, thereby improving on-chain privacy. When Alice funds the contract, she has two possible paths, the swap and the board path. If Bob doesn't show up, Alice can always wait for the timeout to expire and execute the board path, thereby withdrawing her deposit. Along the success path, Bob will also fund his side of the contract. Subsequently, Alice can then withdraw Bob's coin with her, um, with her swap transaction. And in doing so, she releases a publication proof, publication proof that she generated. With this publication proof, Bob can now execute his side of the swap contract and withdraw Alice's deposit, thereby completing the swap. Notice that not all contract execution traces are safe. In this example, Bob has initiated the deposit first, allowing Alice to immediately withdraw with her swap, contract, uh, swap transaction. Now, even though Alice has released her publication proof, Alice has not committed any funds to the contract, thereby leaving Bob empty. This example motivates the need for verification of contracts implemented on the transaction level and to formalize safe strategies for an actor to identify safe and unsafe traces. We note that alternative execution paths are encoded at the output script level. The symbolic execution of the output script results in constraints on the inputs provided by the spinning transaction swap and abort. Now, this presumes, however, that a symbolic execution of script is in fact possible. However, only a fragment has been formalized by Klopin Bracciali, and semi-formally, Tracen uses Miniscript to perform symbolic execution. Miniscript provides a practical fragment of script with many useful lock types for most contract types, but omits arithmetic operations. Before we dive into verifying Bitcoin contracts at the Bitcoin transaction level with Tracenet, we know that it is also possible to implement contracts at a higher abstraction. BitML, for example, by Bartolini and Zunino, is a specification language in process algebra form. Here we see an implementation of a time commitment contract with two possible safe execution traces. Either Alice can reveal her secret A, leading to a state where she can then perform a withdrawal, or a de delay occurs, leading to a state where Bob can then also perform a withdrawal. The BitML compiler trans translates the process algebra into on-chain transactions, but the trace properties at the symbolic level remain. The safety pro properties therefore are guaranteed by the compiler because symbolic and low-level Bitcoin traces are coherent. In summary, implementing a contract at the BitML level gives us a clear abstraction allowing the user to focus on the contract um, logic. However, this comes at a cost of less transaction control which leads potentially to less on-chain privacy or higher execution costs. The benefit of BitML, obviously, is the ability to verify properties at the symbolic level, which are guaranteed by the compiler to translate to the Bitcoin transaction level.
Now, implementing a contract directly at the Bitcoin transaction level has the uh, disadvantage because it is hard to reason about. You have to deal with Bitcoin script, actor knowledge states, and a transaction graph. But it provides us more transaction control, allowing us to potentially optimize for privacy or execution cost. However, verification of properties at the transaction level thus far has been mostly manual. And so the goal of Tracenet is to, to introduce a method which is automatable. In Tracenet, we model the contract state as the tuple of the internal actor's knowledge, the knowledge of the external actor, and the on-chain contract state, B. There are five types of state transitions in Tracenet. A direct message between the actors is called the message exchange transition, which leads to an update in the recipient's knowledge. A transaction broadcast occurs when a valid transaction is broadcast to the network, but not yet appended to the blockchain. The observer can update its knowledge if this transaction includes previously unknown information. When the transaction is confirmed in the blockchain, a transaction confirmation transition occurs, updating our on-chain contract state. A transaction delay is modeled as an increase in the blockchain hype. Finally, the external actor can also initiate a blockchain reorganization up to a depth R. This occurs when the adversarial actor initiates a 51% attack on the blockchain, allowing it to reorder the uh, sequence of contract tra transactions. This final transition type allows us to uh, validate a contract for safety in the presence of possible blockchain reorganizations. Actor knowledge is modeled in a Dolev Yao-like style, where both actors have access to public functions used to expand their knowledge. For example, after the initial setup phase of our swap, Alice can now generate sweep transactions. A sweep transaction spends an output with a script execution path with signatures of a single actor to the signing actor. This is akin to a withdrawal transaction and is featured in the swap and abort paths. With the sign function, transactions can be signed if a private key is known. The on-chain model in Tracenet is an extended PetriNet model generated from the transaction templates, contract transaction templates in the actor's knowledge. Outputs are modeled with places and unspent outputs are modeled by tokens. Knowledge tells us which transactions can be generated and broadcast by which actor. The time locks are generated from the symbolic script execution of each output, and they are rep represented as earliest firing times, I older and I after. I older representing the minimum age of the output, and I, I after representing the minimum block height, after which the transaction can fire. Given the initial state of the contract consisting of actor knowledge and on-chain model, we can now unfold the tracenet into a reachability graph, featuring transition types previously introduced. This reachability graph must be finite due to bounded knowledge and knowledge expansion. We can now check this graph for trace properties of interest, but in particular we want to determine whether a safe execution of the contract can exist for the internal actor, despite any possible non-collaborative actions by the counterparty. First, several definitions. A collaborative trace is one that is fireable by both the internal and external actor. An uncollaborative trace is fireable by a single actor only. For example, the swap path in our Bitcoin swap contract is a collaborative trace which leads to a safe terminal state worth swapped coins. Along this trace, there exist uncollaborative abort paths which allow termination if the collaborative path is not possible because the counterparty is not cooperative. This now leads to the definition of safe states. A safe contract state guarantees that a safe termination is possible. A state is safe if it features at least one uncollaborative trace leading to a safe terminal state. If along this trace, the external actor can race with a transition, this race and transition must lead to a safe state as well. This guarantees that a safe termination is always possible, whether the counterparty is absent or adversarial. Finally, a contract features the trustless execution property if from the initial contract state, at least one collaborative trace exists to a safe terminal state. Furthermore, all states along this collaborative trace must be safe, guaranteeing that the contract can be terminated at any state throughout the execution. So in summary, Tracenet is a, an automatable verification framework for contracts implemented at the transaction level. It can be performed at runtime and features an accurate blockchain model 
which allows us to describe transaction delays or blockchain reorganizations by adversarial actors. Because it can be run at runtime, it can be used as a monitoring framework for the execution of contract implementations or for enforcing universal contract policies at runtime. Thank you very much.